Here we go. We're on the air. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm just sitting on my phone here. How you doing? This is Bruce here from Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to my live stream today. Today is February the uh oh, oh uh February the 6th, 2018. Welcome to my live stream. Uh, great to have you here, everybody. Uh, I'm in Creston, BC, here in Canada, just three miles north of the uh, Idaho border, and it's a beautiful sunny day. Uh, I've got the sunshine sun shining over here, and I got a light over here so I can play shadow puppets. Uh, trying to balance it out because as I'm talking to you over this next little while, the sun will sort of fade away, and the light over there will dominate, and it's it's complicated. It's winter. <laughs> Today we're hitting about 40 degrees here in Creston, BC. Uh, if you're just watching me, uh, uh, you know, for the first time, uh, this is great. Welcome to my channel, Traveling with Bruce. Uh, sign in or, you know, type in, uh, where, where are you watching me from? Where, where are you? What what uh, city or state or country? Uh, tell me what your high temperature is going to be today. We love to compare notes here. My regulars, uh, I'll have a bunch of regulars who will sign in here as the as I keep spieling along here. And they'll say, hi, Bruce, and they'll tell me what their temperature is today and where they're living, and uh, I'll pass it on to you. Uh, for those of you who are watching this video later, not live, but later, you can't see the text that uh, that is scrolling along here. Those of us who are live can see the text, and we can talk to each other. Um, so I'll just be reading the text for everybody so we know what everyone's saying. Uh, my channel, Traveling with Bruce, it's going to be six months old uh, next week or so. Yeah, next week. And uh, in that period of time, I've gone from zero subscribers uh, to where we are now. Um, when I was on the air yesterday at this uh, for this uh, broadcast, I left the air. Uh, we were at we're roughly 593 subscribers. And um, well, let me show you what happened last night. This is this is exciting. I got to use my phone for this. Uh, this is great. This is live action, folks. You're watching editing in motion as it's happening. Uh, let me show you what happened last night. Do you see? Can you see that? That was last night. Uh, I was watching TV with my wife, and all of a sudden, I noticed, "Hey, oh, 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 look at that! That's fantastic!" Six oh one. Thank you, everybody, for that. Uh, I posted it on Twitter today, and I got a lot of responses from it. That was fantastic. Uh, and now, uh, here we are at uh, well, five o'clock Eastern, and uh, right now, uh, just five minutes ago, six hundred twenty-six uh, subscribers. So I went from five ninety-three to six twenty-six. Uh, in about 24 hours fantastic thank you everybody thank you all you newbies who have joined in this is fantastic i hit 100 subscribers um december 13th i started the channel on august the 12th it took me four months to get to 100 and the first 100 of the, i think are the hardest to get they're the hardest uh and uh here we are now um two months later december you know december 13th this is january this is february the 6th not even two months later I got 626, 526 new subscribers on top of the first 100. I mean, I just, whoa. But you all, all you folks know who are regulars who watch me all the time, you know I have been obsessing, <laughs> obsessing with the fact that I need 1,000 subscribers by February the 20th because YouTube has changed the monetization program. Uh, it used to be you just needed 10,000 views, which took me three months to get in the first place. But anyway, you know, whatever. You get 10,000 views to become monetized. I became monetized. You probably saw an ad at the beginning of this uh, broadcast. I apologize, but it's a necessary evil. It's the only way I get paid. <laughs> I'm not sponsored. Uh, so every time there's an ad running, I get like a fraction of a penny. So all the views I can get, the better. And uh, um, yeah, YouTube changed the rules about two weeks ago. Um, they said that doesn't matter if you have a 10,000 subscribers. Now you have to have two things. You now have to have, as of February the 20th, that's the cutoff date, you have to have 4,000 hours of watch time for the previous year from February 20th back. I did that last Saturday right on this stream. Uh, I had some people with me watching it happen. It's fantastic. And then the second side of it, you have to have 1,000 subscribers. If you haven't, if you got one and you don't have the other, you're out. You got to have both. And so I put the word out to my subscribers and, and all my friends and family, and I was begging everybody, look, if you're watching me and you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to this channel. I got to get to 1,000 subscribers by Feb 20. I have to make it. Otherwise, I'll be demonetized. And that means I'll be out for a while before I can get back in. I would not shut the channel down. I would just keep going until I hit 1,000 subscribers anyway. But I really don't want to go through the hassle of being demonetized, reach the plateau of 1,000 subs, and then try to get re-monetize because I have a feeling that's going to take a while with regard to the paperwork. Well, not the paperwork, but I think the new rules and the new implementation that YouTube is putting in for all of their uh, 
vetting and all of their uh, background checking and, and, and make sure the channels are okay. I'm not worried about my channel being um, qualified for monetization, not at all. Um, I have to thank my viewers. I have viewers out there and, and I, I hear from you folks. Uh, I know that I'm welcome into your homes and uh, there are folks out there who are watching me or put me on the TV or they put me on the computer and they listen to me while they're doing their chores around the house because, you know, what's to look at this? I mean, you know, uh, you can look at this for like 59 minutes, but for an hour, I mean, come on, you gotta, you gotta push yourself to watch me for a whole hour. Anyway, I got people who have children all over the place <laughs> and they're making dinner. And, uh, and so I know I'm PG rated and uh, I'm really proud of that. And so um, I know for, from a YouTube perspective, yeah, I'll be monetized. It's not a problem. But I just don't want to go through the ordeal of getting kicked out and then getting back in and applying and hopefully, you know, not having to wait four or six weeks while they, while they figure all this out to re-monetize channels or what have you. And I just want to be in and stay in. We continue on. So cross our fingers. We're at, like I say, 626 or so, and it's coming. Um, every 100 views, it seems I get another subscriber. It just seems to be the formula. It's amazing. Uh, I'm now averaging 2,400 views a day, and yesterday I averaged over 30 subscribers. So, more than 1%, even better. And uh, I'm really excited and I'm really pumped about that. So, thank you, uh, all of you who've joined in. Thank you for all your comments. I have been getting comments from people like crazy the last 24 hours. Thank you for that. It, it shows me you're watching, you're, you're paying attention. I get criticisms, I get praises, I get just general questions. I get it all, and I love it. I, I don't mind being told I could do a better job of this, or I should do this better. Don't mind a bit, because I'm a rookie at YouTube, and I'm just trying to build the uh, channel. Now, if you notice that my picture is changing sometimes, you'll see me in a, with a golden hue here, like I've got jaundice, and then the screen will change to a more of a natural color. I think it's because there's clouds moving outside and the sun is coming and going. And I think the camera up here in this computer is trying to figure out what what, what am I doing? Uh, is, is there enough light for this for me to show this guy? So uh, pardon me if this cha this changes a bit. I think as the hour goes on, this lighting that you see now will probably be the normal lighting uh, for the rest of the show. Anyway, I hope it doesn't bother you too much. It, it sometimes bugs me because I see it, but what are you going to do? Uh, seeing some comments coming in from folks. Some folks are saying, hi, Richard is here. Richard Kornomowski saying, hey, Bruce, 39 from Philly, but it's the Super Bowl championship city of Philadelphia. So what does it matter? Way to go. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys. Charles Jordan's here. Good evening, Bruce. Hi, Charles. How you doing? Teresa McFarland's here. Good day, Bruce. Minus 14 in Waterloo, Ontario. It was minus 12 yesterday, wasn't it? Wasn't it minus 14 the day before that? When are you getting a break? Unbelievable. I used to live in Waterloo, Ontario. I grew up there. Oh, my old hometown. It's it's so cold. Ma Michaela Smith is here. Hi, I'm, I'm in Spokane. I think it's 46. Mikhail, I know you're new and you're a neighbor of mine. I think you wrote me and you told me we're almost neighbors and you're right. I think it's two hours, 20 minutes by car. I'm in Spokane. Beautiful place. Love it. Uh, welcome to my channel. It's fantastic. Uh, Betsy is here. Betsy Gerlecki. Welcome, Betsy, from Hamilton, Ontario, I think. Welcome back, Betsy. Uh, Susan McQuinnan is here. I think I've got that. I hope I spelled that right. I said that right, Susan. Susan McQuinnan. 80 degrees in Newport, Ritchie, Florida, in the Tampa Bay area. Susan, you're going to win this. <laughs> you're going to be the winner today, I'm sure. I, that's fantastic. 80 degrees. Folks, what would you give to have 80 degrees as your high temperature today? What, what, would, you, what would you give? Oh, that's fantastic. Welcome to the channel. This is great to have you. Uh, MC, MC Slimy is here, or Slimmy, MC Slimmy uh, is here. We're going on a Disney cruise wonder with my mom and dad and four sisters in 11 days. Oh, you got to be counting the days. It's just awesome, isn't it? 11 days. Oh, the, these are the slowest days. These are the slowest days. The last 10. They, they take forever. The last day doesn't take long because it's panic time. The last 24 hours is panic. But up until then, it just, oh, the clock is just not moving. What's going on? Way to go. You're going to have a great time, I'm sure. Wes Morrison's here. Wes, how you doing, buddy? 53 degrees and raining here in New Bruns, Bronzefels, Texas. Uh, sorry to hear it, but it's better than snow. <laughs> Welcome, buddy. Pamela Jordan's here. Hi, Bruce. Good to see you. Elizabeth Breen is here. Hot in Florida. That's what we're hearing. Um, Pamela's saying 64 and sunny here in Iowa, South Carolina, 80 in Florida. And then Cruiser, 4348 is here. Hi, Cruiser, 4348. Welcome to my channel. I got your messages today. I know I responded to them. Thank you so much for finding me. 
I saw your videos. I know you're a YouTuber, and I saw some videos you did on the MSCC side, and that's where I'm going to start the show off right now because I've been waiting for you. <laughs> we have been talking about the MSCC side, and, and you regulars, you know, who follow me all the time, my goodness, a, a month ago, I was all excited about the MSCC side. I'm talking about, oh, it's coming, or maybe two months ago. It's coming, and it's going to be great, this new design. It's a fantastic-looking ship. And then we start hearing nightmare stories from MSCC side passengers. So, I mean, just one after the other. It wasn't like, uh, you know, one person didn't like this, and one didn't. Per now, we're hearing all kinds of stuff. And then we're hearing the, the poop stories the poop smell stories on the MSCC side. And I, I thought, oh, gosh, please let this be one cabin. Let this be just one room. Uh, no, it's not one room. It's not one cabin. It's, it's, it's multi. And now the odors are going around. And then we're hearing, I'm hearing more stuff. Uh, I'm hearing stuff about um, the food, of course, blandness of the food. Um, I'm hearing the entertainment, that people are not happy about the entertainment selections on the ship. Uh, leaky uh, sinks in public areas, in the public bathrooms. Um, uh, and the embarkation day, the day you get on. I've heard people love it. Some people say, oh, yeah, we got in and we checked in and we were on the ship in 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It was wonderful. And then I'm hearing others who are saying, oh, no, 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 no. It depends on the room you have and depends on the class of room you have, how long it takes. And they are watching other people go on the ship before they get to go. And they were there an hour earlier. That's, ridic that's ridiculous. If you, if you check in at 11 o'clock in the morning and other people check in at noon or 1 o'clock, you should already be on board. You should be in just a group and you should be just escorted on the ship 100 at a time or 50 at a time, whatever the, whatever, however the ship likes to do it, and get going. There shouldn't be people having to linger in the uh, waiting area, especially if you have children. That is utterly unacceptable. You cannot expect parents to keep children sitting in seats, in vinyl, probably vinyl seats, for an hour or two to board a ship when other people have come later and are already on? No, that's that's not good. So anyway, I'm hearing that kind of talk. Um, now I'm hearing about travel agents refusing to book uh, passengers on the ship. They're uh, they're upset. Uh, they're uh, they're hearing stories uh, as well. They've got. I'm imagining they've had passengers on the ship and are hearing back from them. They're not getting good vibes. They're stopping all bookings at the moment, waiting for this thing to calm down. Uh, I'll tell you, it's not, it's not good. Uh, so I'm, I'm wondering why, what's, what's, what's going to happen? I just don't know. Um, uh, a cruiser at 4340 is saying, I'm from Atlanta. Question, why can't we enjoy the cruises anymore like before? Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, <laughs> cruiser saying, I'm just a cruiser. Uh, yeah, I know it, you know, it's changed, hasn't it? it the, the business has completely changed. Uh, Betsy, by the way, is saying it's six below in Hamilton, Ontario. Dylan LaRue is here from Henderson. How you doing, buddy? 80 degrees. You're tying Tampa today for the hot temperature of the day. Welcome, Dylan. Welcome back. Michaela Smith says, sounds like an awful cruise. Yeah, you know, this, um, the MSCC side, is, is the ship is gorgeous. I mean, if you, you've seen pictures of it, we've seen videos. Uh, it, it's wonderful. The design is cutting edge. It's all new, you know, name it. I don't know how functional the ship is in, you know, heavy seas or anything like that. I mean, you know. Not, I'm not an expert in, in that kind of thing and cruising, but boy, to the eye, it looks absolutely stunning. But I, I, you know, these logistics, I understand ships, new ships, and ships that come out of dry dock with major renovations. These kinds of ships will have teething problems, minor issues from time to time in, in the first week or two when they start to sail, especially a brand new ship, because a brand new ship, the size of the seaside with that many people on board, crew and, 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 and staff and, and passengers, you're talking, you know, several thousand people, three, four, five thousand people, all using the bathrooms, all decks, washing their hands. The kitchens are in full, you know, full swing, and the front of the ship, the middle of the ship, the back of the ship. I mean, everything is running, and so the the the, the systems are being tested to the max. You know, in in 80 degree weather, air conditioning systems are on, HVAC system, everything. I get it, and you can have, you know, the minor glitch here and there, but to have the kind of problems that we're hearing about. Uh, from the plumbing end of it, that's really bad, nasty. Uh, that's just nasty stuff. And uh, these orders are, are you know, th this is a cruise killer. I mean, this just kills a cruise. Uh, and then there's the food issue. And that is nothing to do, really, with logistics, uh, you know, how the stove works or whether the dishwasher is working or not. I mean, the taste and quality of the food or, or, or you know, I don't know if it's a quality issue. I'm sure the quality of the food is fine. 
but the preparation of the food and and the the tasting of the food and the the spiciness and the you know the blandness i'm hearing this time and time again this is a problem solved in a microsecond you just need a chef who steps in and says do it this way not that way and let's change recipes and let's go um the pizzas are great i hear great stuff about the pizzas i hear okay news about the specialty restaurants generally speaking but the restaurants and then now the the seating times that they're showing um you know two hours for a for a dinner seating uh i agree with with uh with my friend here uh this uh this two hour time limit you can't do a two hour time limit for dinner you gotta make it three i mean dinner is the highlight of the day for most not most for a lot of people i won't say in the in in the 50s and 60s when you crossed the atlantic ocean on the transatlantic dinner was everything <laughs> especially if you had kids because you got in there at five and, and you left at about seven or eight maybe eight o'clock uh, and then you had a later seating and you know went to later but uh dinner was everything you had four or five course meals um nowadays to do a two course a, a two hour uh um, a meal you, you're talking three courses in and out in and out. you got to turn them over because you need 15 minutes to prep the tables for the next guests right so i don't know I, i'm hearing a lot of stuff about it i'm just kind of hoping this is just early problems that six months from now we won't hear this anymore a year from now it's forgotten and we'll you know not worry about it anymore but at the moment this is a pressing issue and i'm like i say i'm i'm, I'm seeing it and i'm i'm hearing about it and i'm wondering what exactly has been going on so uh any of you folks have any comments on it by all means let me know uh let me just check on uh any more messages here okay we got mark the lost traveler here uh, 79 in Orlando, just saw the Falcon heavy lift off, 27 inches, very loud, fantastic, Mark. Uh, I'm sorry, but you're in second place. Uh, 79 just won't cut it anymore. We got 80 degree highs in Tampa and Henderson, Nevada. Get your coat on, buddy. Uh, put a toque on. You're, you're, <laughs> you're in second place. I'm sorry, but you're back. Welcome. I hope you had a good trip to LA. Uh, Mark is with American Airlines, I believe. Betsy uh, in Hamilton saying, uh, will they get fixed just like the Davina? I'm sure they will. I mean... If I were in charge of MSC and I were in charge of that ship, or if I'm in charge of the North American division, I'd be all over these people. Uh, I'd be just, you know, this would be top priority. And um, I don't care what it takes. Uh, if you've got to bring technicians from the, the, the shipyard where that ship was built, or if you've got to bring technicians from the, the uh, plumbing entity, the, 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 you know, the engineering company and whoever designed the plumbing, for the, you bring those people onto the ship and inspect and let's get this resolved. Figure out know, what's wrong here. Let's get this done because it's just unacceptable. Um, Scott uh, uh, Batchley is here. Scott, how are you? Hi, Bruce. Silent Cruiser. Been watching a while from Ventura, California. Beautiful area. It's foggy and 63 degrees. Doesn't matter. Foggy and 63. It's still beautiful. What about the sewage orders? I've been hearing about on the seaside. We've just been talking about it. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, it's unbelievable. Scott, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Charles Jordan, a uh, laugh out loud. Uh, MC uh, Slimmy, we still have 44 weeks and four days to go. Uh oh, Charles and somebody else, they know each other. <laughs> Mark, the last traveler, 19 days for Norwegian Cruise Line Getaway. Right on. I know you're counting the days. Betsy, 19 days. We'll be on the anthem. Here we go, folks. We're getting ready to go cruising. This is fantastic. You guys are going to have a great time. It's, and you notice how the temperatures are warming up here. Florida now hitting 80s. Uh, Mark the Lost Travelers got up to 79. Um, you know, another two weeks, mid 80s. And that hopefully that 70, 60 degree temperatures will start coming north a little bit up to maybe Georgia, South Carolina. Cross our fingers, right? Uh, Mark the Lost Traveler, Traveler saying first cruise was Princess Miami to uh, SAN through the Panama Canal through to San Francisco uh or san diego I'm not sure uh you'll have to help me on that one uh first cruise was princess miami to san through the panama canal fantastic yes my question of the day for you guys today i've got two topics i want to talk about the first one i'm just going to mention tell me your first ever cruise can you remember the name of the ship uh where'd you go <laughs> i just love to have you reminisce and tell us some of you've been cruising only for a little short period of time. Some of you've never cruised before, uh, and some of you've been cruising for quite a while. So, quite curious to know. Anyone out there that's watching, you want to say hi? Uh, by all means, say hello. Tell us where you're watching from if you want. And what's your high temperature going to be today? We'll lock you into the crowd. Ask anything you want about cruising or traveling. It's uh, not restricted to any one topic. Uh, we kind of go off topic from time to time. We'll do a little, you know, a little sidetrack. We'll talk and we'll come back to the topic at hand. Uh, Mark last time we're saying, uh, 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 with the ex-wife then <laughs> like a couple screws, right? That was a couple screws, but, uh, but not now. Yes. Mark is, um, 
Mart's available, uh, from what I understand. Although I think Mark has a girlfriend, uh, and there have been a few attempts on this site to turn this into a dating site. Um, <laughs> some of my some of my faithful have been commenting to Mark, "Oh, how old are you? And uh, you know, where do you live? And uh, what cruise are you going on?" And so it's getting kind of fun around here. Uh, Scott is uh, saying, "Gonna be on the Norwegian Cruise Line Bliss in September." Traveling solo in the studios. I want to hear about that, Scott. I want to know about that. Uh, tell us if you could. Did you feel you got a decent price on that cruise, or do you think you really overpaid because you're a solo traveler? I'd love to know. Uh, by all means, if you want to tell us, please do. Mark is saying, I checked solo. They were more than a regular cabin. Interesting. Uh, cruise 4348 saying, uh, uh, Royal Caribbean, grandeur of the seas, from Miami to the Caribbeans in 1997, December, your first ever cruise. That had. That had to have been great. That must have been a fantastic cruise. Uh, I hope that worked that worked out better than the seaside, I'm sure. <laughs> Matt, I can't even remember my first ever cruise. That's really bad, but it was 35 years ago. Matt, <laughs> what are you, 37? <laughs> I wish. Uh, welcome, Matt. It's nice to have you back. Susan is here. Uh, Susan McGinn is saying, Carnival Paradise out of Tampa to Cozumel. Very first time. Uh, that would have been a great, great cruise. That would have been a great cruise, a Caribbean cruise. Fantastic. Elizabeth is saying, 2015, The Breeze, Miami to Jamaica, Grand Cayman, and Cozumel. Three more booked right now. Elizabeth, you're not getting dusty where you are. Not at all. You're on the go. This is fantastic. Um, 2015, uh, that's just, just a couple of years ago. And uh, fantastic. Uh, what, a, what, a, what a great, you know, Spots, Jamaica, Grand Cayman. Grand Cayman's fun. I used to live there, folks. Uh, I lived on Grand Cayman for about two years. I was an offshore uh, investment manager there. You know, you know Tom Cruise in that movie, The Firm? I was the offshore guy. I was, you know, I was the broker to help them. I, I handled the money for those guys, but not the crooks. <laughs> I only dealt with lawyers. <laughs> Good lawyers. <laughs> Which could leave the firm alive, by the way. I left the firm alive. It, it's all good. <laughs> okay, Cruiser 4348. It was a, it was five stars. He's saying his first cruise was five stars. There you go. My first cruise, folks. Holland America, Oosterdam, Mexican Riviera from San Diego down to Cabo, uh, Puerto Vallarta, and Mazatlan. And I loved it. Went with another couple who were veteran cruisers. And they convinced me and my wife to come for a cruise with them for a week. And we had our cabin on one side of the ship. They had their cabin way over on the other side of the ship, way up at the front. So we didn't bump into each other in the hallway. Nothing uncomfortable happened between neighbors or anything like that. And we had a great time. And we made a pact to uh, meet each other at, at the very least. If we didn't see each other all day long on the ship, we would meet at dinner. And uh, we had the same table every night in the dining room, 7 o'clock, I believe it was, same waiters. Fantastic. Great food, great service, great company. Still friends today. was a wonderful time. Um, let's see. Here were the, the, the comments are coming in fast and furious. Um, let me just double check here. Where am I? Okay, Betsy from Hamilton is saying, my first cruise will be on the Anthem on February the 25th. Fantastic. That's oh. That's 19 days. Oh, my. This is going to be great, Betsy. Susan uh, McGinnigan is uh, uh, going on Norwegian Star out of Miami, April 22, repositioning to Barcelona. First repositioning cruise. That I, I expect that to be just great. Uh, wonderful. I'm sure you got a really good deal on it. I, I, you, don't want, you don't mind telling us. What did it cost you? Did you get a good bargain? What kind of room you got? <laughs> we'll share that. Teresa McFarland says, first cruise was a cruise on uh, Nor uh, Norwegian, the sky, out of uh, Florida in 2001. Right on, right on. Things have changed since 2001 for cruise shipping, that's for sure, uh, and everywhere else, obviously. Richard Koromaski, first cruise, Star Princess, Anchorage to Vancouver, never made it, hit a rock outside of Juneau, Alaska, and off on lifeboats. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. What happened to the uh, to the ship? The, 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 was the ship okay? I mean, did they get it into do dry dock and repair it? Or, and then how long were you on the boats? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you seem to still be a fan of cruising. <laughs> oh, man. Scott uh, uh, Batchelor is saying, I've done the breakaway and escape in the studios and had a great time, got a decent price for the Bliss, but booked it in January of 17. So a year ago you booked it. Okay. So you booked far enough in advance to, to get there. Mark Lost Traveler saying, hi, Teresa. Mark Lost Traveler saying, I see my married girlfriend is here. Teresa, laugh out loud. 
They're everywhere. What can I say? They're everywhere. Wes Morrison, uh, about 10 years ago on the Carnival Elation from Galveston, Texas to Cancun and Cozumel. Great way to start the first ever cruise, man. Fantastic. And then Mike Hamilton's here. Hi, Bruce from Jersey. Mike, how you doing, buddy? Welcome. We're talking about our first ever cruise. What, um, when was it? What ship were you on? Where'd you go? Uh, you want to share those thoughts? By all means, tell us. We're kind of curious. I'm just reading the comments here. They're coming through fast and furious. Uh, Richard saying, no kidding, 300 foot gash, and we did not take a cruise for 12 years. <laughs> wife refused even a free cruise in 1995 she wouldn't take the free cruise after that experience you guys if you're putting me on a lifeboat on my first cruise from uh, anchorage to vancouver in no way i'm not taking another cruise it took a while but she, i guess she's come around so wow what a deal <laughs> that's a good good story Teresa McFarland, hi, Mark, she's saying, and Christine R. is here. Hi, uh, hi, Bruce, hey, Bruce, and everybody, uh, 21 degrees Fahrenheit in Michigan. How you doing, Christine? We're talking about our first ever cruise. When did you take it? What was the name of your ship? Where'd you go? And uh, so far, the best story is Richard's. <laughs> Richard's got the winning story here, trying to go from Anchorage to, uh, I think it's got Vancouver. And uh, the didn't make it. Uh, the uh, the uh, ship hit some rocks, had a big gash in the boat. And he had to take the lifeboats. <laughs> oh, but you're back, Richard. You're back on cruising, and I'm assuming your wife is back too. So uh, welcome back, and let's hope no more of these kinds of adventures. <clears throat> Mark Lust Traveler saying, wondering what food you will never eat on a cruise. Talk to me, people. What food won't you eat on a cruise? I have to think. If you're not going to eat it on a cruise, you're probably not going to eat it on land anyway. But, uh, you know, what won't you touch? <laughs> I'm curious about that. Richard's saying, just our luck, we had a lifetime of weird stories. Well, there you go. Uh, uh, yeah, there's we have all kinds of them, don't we? Uh, Mark the Lost Traveler saying, abandoned ship will always win. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Uh, Mike Hamilton, 1986, Port Canaveral. One day, not sure what ship. 1986, been a while, been a while. Uh, uh, Mike, you were probably only, you know, you're probably only, what, 40 years old now. So, you know, you're just a kid, right? Uh, so that's why you don't remember it. We all have excuses. It's okay. I know my first ever cruise on a vessel, an ocean liner, was crossing the Atlantic in 1959. We went from Canada to uh, Germany. My father was in the, uh, in the Canadian Army uh, with NATO. And he uh, was stationed in Germany for three years. And uh, we took a cruise uh, ocean liner back from Germany to Canada. And that was the Homerick, the, the ocean liner called the Homerick with home lines. I don't know the name of the ship that took us the other direction. I, I know I have it somewhere in my records, but at the moment I can't recall it. Uh, both ships no longer exist, obviously. <laughs> but I remember, I don't remember anything about the first ocean crossing going to Germany. I would have been four-ish, three and a half. But I remember the one back. Uh, I remember bits and pieces. I was six or seven years old. And uh, the big memory for me uh, was the food, dinner time, how uh, I had to get dressed up every night to go to dinner. I could, I, not that I couldn't believe it. I just did whatever my parents told me to do. But I see photos of us at the dinner table, and I'm wearing a white shirt. And I may have had a tie on from time to time. They may have let go. My mom and dad may have let me go without a tie on the second night. Uh, and you know, had dress pants on, like you know, like I'm going to church or something. This is dinner. And my mom is dolled out in a wonderful dress, different dress every night for all six nights of the cruise of the ocean crossing. My father is wearing a suit and tie every evening, and my sister is, is dressed up in a nice little pretty little dress. And uh, you know, situation normal for a you know, for a kid, you just kind of go with the flow. But I found out later what the deal was. <laughs> You did get dressed up for dinner, yes. But the real reason, what really was going on, mom and dad were cooking something up. And uh, they had this going on every night on this thing. We had our dinner, a like four or five course meal, and the waiters just spoiled us rotten. The food was wonderful. Uh, you know, we as kids, <laughs> we, we ate heavenly. It was heavenly. My parents ate wonderfully. They loved it too. And then uh, after dinner was over, my dad and mom and dad, we'd take us for a little walk around the ship, you know, kind of kind of get the kids a little air, you know, get the kids a little, they got those full bull full bellies. Let's take it for a little walk, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And then get some fresh air in our lungs. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then back to the cabin and let's get that stuffy clothing off, you know, and, and, and you kids can put on your PJs because it's so much more comfortable. Right. And then, oh, here's a coloring book and you can, you can sort of lie in your bed and play a little bit. And then about 15 minutes later, 
we're gone because, you know, parents probably made sure we got turkey <laughs> and a lot of gravy. And we're out like a light. Yeah, every night we're out like a light by, what, 8 o'clock, 8.30. Why? Because mom and dad are leaving the cabin and they're heading down to the uh, to the ballroom where the dancing's taking place. There's a live orchestra playing every night on this cruise. Mom and dad are smoking their cigarettes, having their cocktails, and hanging out with all the other army buddies <laughs> and their wives. And they're having a wonderful all time. Six nights of partying on this ocean liner. And we kids didn't have any of it. We were sleeping. Not complaining. What, what, what am I going to go to that? <laughs> I'd rather be sleeping at that age. It was fantastic. And my parents, they talked about that o ocean voyage for the rest of their lives. Whenever friends would come over and visit for dinner and talk about the old days, you know, the old days would come up. The first, the first stories that would come up with parents would how they used to spank their kids when they were not, when they weren't behaving themselves. So that's first. That's the first story that the, those parents would talk about. Ah, well, they, you know, whenever he misbehaved, we just spanked them. And then the next bunch of stories would be <laughs> where we lived over the years, and then the cr the ocean crossing would come up. And oh yeah, the, that that ship, the talk about that ship would be legendary for years and years and years and years. And why not? My parents were in around thirty odd years of age, two kids on a gorgeous ocean liner across the Atlantic. And just whining and dining their way across this the sea. Oh, how good is that? I'm telling you, that was fantastic. Anyway, that's my my first ever series of uh, voyages on the open seas. Um, let's see what we got here. Making sure I'm up to speed on all my messages here. Uh, David is here. David Kinsey, good evening from Texas. David, how are you? Welcome. Pamela Jordan is saying our first cruise was on the Enchantment of the Seas out of Fort Canaveral in 2014, four nights to the Bahamas. Had to have been great. Uh, fantastic. Steve Bartley, San Francisco to Honolulu. Matson Lines, uh, Lure Line, 1964. And uh, I came from Germany over in 62. So I know the kind of cruising you were doing in 64, what kind of a ship you're on. Fantastic. State of the art. At, the, at that time, those ships were state of the art. Uh, Charles Jordan saying, had to drag uh, had to drag Pam off the ship. She didn't want to leave. <laughs> 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 oh man, Scott uh, Batchy saying I won my first cruise four nights to Ensenada from Long Beach. Got me started loving cruises from then on. Was in the '80s, been on 30 plus since then. Yeah, once you're once you start cruising, you're hooked. Uh, chances are, uh, unless of course your ship tries to sink on you, and you have to get off on a lifeboat. Then you think things can change for a while. I get that. Uh, Mark is saying Mark lost traveler. Um, only one day cruise out of Port Canaveral is the casino cruise ship uh, that I I know of. Laugh out loud, okay? Uh, Charles Obama is saying. Charles is saying I was on a cruise when I was 12 in the 50s uh, in the on the Matson line to the Hawaiian Islands with my parents. I got a little sick, so they gave me Dramamine, so it knocked me out. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what it would have been in that at that time. That would have been the uh, treatment for it. And of course, at that age, uh, you know, being uh, being 12 and not having the body mass of an adult uh, it could probably knock you out. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth uh, Breen saying, I believe cruising is the least expensive vacation for a family of four. Agreed. Absolutely. Uh, let's put it this way. Um, it's the least expensive for what you're getting for the money. How about that? I'm, I'm going to say it's the best value for a vacation you can get for the money. Uh uh, I cannot imagine, um, I don't know how you can beat, uh, you know, in, in the case of, say, a celebrity cruise or, or Hall in America. You're talking about a five-star cruise line uh, with the, uh, you know, the full linens at dinner time and uh, the beautiful bedding, uh, the great entertainment. Uh, of course, the, res the resort itself, you know, the pools and, and the jacuzzis and, you know, the other things you can do. And then all the activities for the kids. I mean, my goodness, uh, the kids clubs, the teen clubs. Um, you know, I mean, you see these kids, they kind of, they get together that first day of the cruise, you know, they, you, you read your newsletter from your, from your purser and it'll tell you all the events that are going on on the ship first day, second day and so on. And they're, t they're telling you where to take those kids. Uh, we have events starting at nine in the morning until six at night. Don't, you don't see your kids. <laughs> they're gone and they don't want to be with you really. They're having a blast and they've made pals on board the cruise. For the whole week that they've been on that ship, I mean, it's, it's you know there are tears shed sometimes at the end of the cruise when kids have to say goodbye to each other who they just become pals on on this cruise. But nowadays with social media, I bet you children are in touch with each other, emailing uh, even after the cruise. I, I'm sure there are 
there might be lifelong friendships being built nowadays with the social media the way it's going. Quite amazing. Um, just see here what else I have here. Uh, Mark Lost Travel is saying that's true, Elizabeth, but you won't say that if you went on a Disney cruise. Yeah, it's it's not the – yeah, okay, value. <laughs> I didn't mention Disney, did I? Yeah. If you're on a Disney cruise and Mark has absolute firsthand knowledge of this, uh, I think Mark just finished paying off some personal loans not too long ago with respect to some of his Disney cruises when he was when he had the fam going. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to take a cruise on Disney, uh, it can be rather pricey, but it's a Disney cruise. It's a different kettle of fish here. I get it. Um, I took my daughter, my wife and I took our daughter to Disney World. We took her to Disneyland. And we shelled out the money to enjoy the park and the rides and the, you know, the whole shebang. And we just bought into it. We just kind of went, hey, this is the cost of Disney World and that's all there is to it. You want a, a, a value cruise for the money uh, on a cruise level, okay, uh, for a family of four with, say, a child of, um, oh, I don't know, eight and one of 12 or, you know, six and 10. I mean, whatever, you know, whatever. Um, Royal Caribbean, uh, some of these monster ships with the flow riding machines, the rock climbing walls, the zip lines, the water slides, uh, you know, and on and on and on. Th there you go. I mean, there's there's value for the money. And you can control your spending on a cruise ship depending on the level of room you're going to take. If you, if you cheap out with an inside room and you have that extra cash left over for all the, the events and all the other activities, great. Um, if you go with a balcony room and, and, you know, not do not quite as much uh, other activities, fair enough. It all depends on priorities. You can control the budget. And of course you can shop for a deal. And that's the other thing about cruising that I love is you shop for the deal of the best, uh, you know, the best cruise deal that's out there. Uh, Elizabeth saying, I don't do Disney. I live in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you live in Florida. Uh, Mark lost traveler, me in Orlando, Lake Nona. And <laughs> Mark is right there. Uh, uh, Elizabeth saying, I'm in Deltona. Mark is saying, I was just uh, at La Mesa RV Park looking at an RV. Uh oh, here we go. Oh, man. That's a whole other world, Mark. Uh, you know, your house on wheels, of course. Um, you can do something like this, you know, on the side as a little holiday thing, or you can make it a full time gig. And uh, I admit, I follow some YouTubers that are full time RVers, and I love watching their videos. But, oh, boy, I uh, see some of the uh, logistics involved of uh, maintaining these rigs. <gasps> Oof, I, just, I, just, I just don't want to get my hands that dirty. I'm, not, I'm just not that kind of guy. But, boy, uh, yeah, uh, Class A motorhome in a nice, uh, nice area of the country uh, would be kind of cool. But uh, cruising's kind of got me going. I, I kinda, I'm kind of more into wanting to do the cruise thing because I just like to be pampered. <laughs> Anyway, if any, any of you folks who are just joining this chat, this live stream, welcome to Traveling with Bruce. I'm Bruce. I'm located in Creston, B.C. here in Canada. I'm three miles north of the Idaho border. Our temperature today is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, um, mainly sunny most of the day, although it's getting cloudy now. And if you want to join in our conversation, by all means, you're welcome to do so. If you want to tell me, where are you watching me from? And what's your high temperature today? We've been asking folks who are, who are here what was the first cruise you were ever on? When did you take it? How long ago? And what was the name of the ship, if you remember? And where did you go? Share that with us. We're going down memory lane on the uh, on today's chat to sort of start things off. Uh, but we'll talk about anything. You want to talk about RVing? We'll talk RVing. We want to talk flights on airplanes? We'll do that too. Uh, Richard saying, Bruce, it's always fun when the ship goes bump in the night. <laughs> <laughs> rocking hard and lifeboats go down across your window with no announcements on what happened to the ship. Yeah, that That is, um, I'll call that a real life, uh, a true life, uh, interesting life experience. How about that? Uh, yeah. When, when you, you're looking out your balcony or your, your, in your window, your ocean view window, and you see that lifeboat coming down in the middle of the night with, you know, lights from the deck and no one's saying anything. <laughs> And the ship is, yeah, you kind of you, you kind of ask yourself, should we be grabbing the life jackets right about now? Hmm? Now, I would hope that on today's cruise ship, it would be better. But I tell you, folks, we remember how many years ago, uh, five, six, not even five, six years ago, the Costa Concordia. Uh, here's a cruise ship that uh, people are still having dinner in the dining room. 
and the captain decides, hey, let's bring the old Costa Concordia right near a little Italian village that, uh, you know, I know, I have some friends there, relatives there, and we'll kind of, you know, flash the lights at them from the, from the ship. We'll come really close to the rocky shore, and sure enough, the ship, you know, runs over some, you know, rocks sticking out uh, from the bottom of the uh, ocean that are, you know, 10 feet under the surface because of the high tide, and the ship scrapes along in massive gash. Did the alarms go off? No. Did the sirens go off? No. Uh, the passengers had to figure it out for themselves. And, and the dead giveaway was when the ship began to tilt and the lights started to go off. I mean, that was a, another sign for passengers to kind of go, hmm, maybe we have a problem here, Houston, and we should do something about it. And the only announcements that were being made from the cockpit, from the, you know, from the helm, was oh, we just have a little electrical problem. I don't know of an electrical problem that causes a ship to tilt like that. And, uh, and then, of course, if you're below deck, water's coming up the steps from below. Uh, not, not good. Uh, that, was, that was terrible. It was a miracle that only, what, 31, 32 people lost their lives? An absolute miracle, a fluke of nature, complete luck that the ship didn't drift out into the deeper water because the wind actually pushed the ship towards the shore. It's just fortunate that the wind happened to be going that direction. If the wind had been going the opposite direction, the ship would have drifted out into the uh, into the sea a little further, a mile or two away from the shoreline, uh, which I think a thousand foot deep is the water there, a very steep drop off, and the ship would have gone down, and we would have had massive loss of life, massive, just just oh terrible. It's a it was a miracle the way it all worked out the way it did, but what a disaster, right? Yeah, things can happen, and uh, you have to pay attention. Uh, welcome to cruising. <laughs> it's a rare occurrence, I'll admit, but things can happen. Okay, uh, Dylan is saying, oh, I want to I do an RV too. I keep ser searching for a little Class C. Elizabeth saying, my husband is a long-haul trucker. I'd like an RV, but I don't think uh, his idea of a vacation is driving. Yeah, I get, I get that. I think he's had enough of that, uh, Elizabeth. I think he wants someone else to do the driving. Uh, leave it for that. Uh, what do we got here? Cruiser 4348. Ten years ago, I was spending $5,000 for seven days cruise with wife and two kids. Now I spend the same money, but only different is the quality of food, and it's down today. Yeah, you know, um, uh, we, we were just we were mentioning this earlier about the quality of, of, of cruising today versus 10, 20 years ago. The food, um, you know, it's all different now. It, it used to be 15, 20 years ago. Uh, dining room. It was. It was all about the dining room. There might have been a. There was a buffet. There would have been the midnight buffet, a special deal, in the main dining room. You'd go to the main dining room. They have tables set up with the food on it as a buffet, and you would just grab a plate and it would be a you know one time special thing or a couple of nights on the cruise, and then grab a table, have a bite. But uh, you know now we have all these specialty restaurants and the dining rooms and all of these you know secondary. I'll, I'll call them secondary specialty restaurants because you've got the burger joints. You got the pizza parlors, you get the hot dog stands, you know, where the cheeseburgers are and the fries. This is not what cruising used to be. You, you didn't go on a cruise and spend the kind of money that he's talking about. Uh, five grand 20 years ago uh, was a car or almost a car. Uh, you didn't spend that kind of money to get a cheeseburger and fries. No, 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 no. You didn't do that. Uh, but today, we know. We see these ads on, on these, the internet sites. I, I love watching vacations to go.com. We see these deals for, for cruises where, you know, uh, say $5.99, $6.99 for, per person for balcony, and the kids can go free, just pay, you know, taxes and fees uh, and then tips, and you can bring them on board. Well, you're still talking three, dollars 4000 bucks, you know, by the time you add it all up, and people are enjoying burgers and fries. I, 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 part of me, because of my age, part of me is going, going why would you do that? Why would you just have a hot dog and fries when you could go into the dining room and have a New York strip steak. <laughs> you know, you can, you can go into the dining room for breakfast and order a waffle and scrambled eggs and, you know, and everything's brought to you and you can just enjoy it in style with, you know, with linens and silverware. But in our world today, uh, it's different. We, we, you know, the 30 somethings, uh, the 20 somethings, it's a different life for them. And uh, speed and convenience, and sometimes it's the activities either on the ship or on shore that dominate the cruise. It's not necessarily the food that dominates the cruise anymore. Whereas from my generation and back, um, 
the food was the one thing, the number one thing. The second thing was the entertainment. And I come, I go back to the story with regard to my parents crossing the ocean. Uh, the highlight of their day uh, was the evening, uh, right around, you know, get the kids to dinner at whatever time it was, if we were eating at five or 5.30, and then get them to bed. And then mom and dad have mommy daddy time with their pals in the ballroom. And it's live music and dancing and drinking and smoking and telling dirty jokes and doing whatever. That was the world. Uh, we didn't get television at sea. You couldn't watch the Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl on the ocean. You didn't have the giant TV out in the pool deck, you know, the giant LED television that's 50 feet across or 250 feet across, whatever the size of it is. We didn't have four swimming pools and seven hot tubs. Didn't exist. So it's all changed. And now uh, with the cruise lines coming up with these new on-boat experiences, we talk about, we call them gimmicks. Um, you know, you've got the, 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 the water slides. I mean, that's, that's, not more than 10 years old, really, uh, 15 at most. Now they're becoming quite sophisticated, and every ship going into dry dock is being fitted with a new water slide system. Otherwise, you're toast. You're just not going to attract the crowds. You've got to have uh, laser tag. You've got to have uh, you've got to have uh, rock climbing walls. You've got to have now rope rope uh, obstacle courses. Um, you've got to have um, zip lines, uh, you know, more and more. Nor Norwegian bringing out the bliss. Go-karts, 1,000 foot long track, double layer, one on top of the other, electric powered go-karts on the bliss. This is the new normal. It used to be you could just have a video game that had a, you know, Formula One kind of car, a plastic thing that you'd sit in and you'd have a steering wheel and you have a little pedal and you look at a TV screen and you'd go racing. It's not going to cut anymore. You got to have a real go-kart on the cruise ship with a thousand foot track to go around to bring in the audience. And this is all what it's about. The food end of it is coming down in, in, in importance. It used to be the number one safety, of course, but number one was food for enjoyment. Um, it's, it's getting, getting tight out there. And of course it used to be all inclusive. It's not all inclusive anymore on most of these lines. You pay extra for the good stuff and the good stuff used to be what you got all the time. Uh, the steakhouse on any cruise ship today, that was the food in the dining room every night, and it was included in your fare. But you were paying the equivalent of, well, in those days, even 5,000, uh, 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Today, you're, you're, you know, you want the steakhouse every night, that's what, 60, 70 bucks more per person per night extra. So you get the cheap room, but then you pay for the specialty. It's the way it is. Uh, we just have to, we have to admit, uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, what do we got for comments here? I'm going to say I'm caught up here. Uh, Betsy is saying, I can't RV driving, very stressful. Doreen is saying, hi, Bruce, minus two. And Pictou County, Pictou, Nova Scotia? Are you in Pictou? I think so. Uh, Mark Lost Traveler, I was looking at a travel trailer, so much easier. Okay. Dylan LaRue, starting, uh, starting packing for Ruby Princess, going to Cabo at the end of this month, my first cruise. Way to go, Dylan. It's going to be great. Teresa McFarland, this is awesome, Dylan. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, Elizabeth Breen, Bruce, do you think specialty dining is worth it on Carnival? I'm thinking of the steakhouse. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to say probably. Um, you're probably going to be all right. But I'll tell you what I would do. Um, uh, check check YouTube channels for the ship you're going on. I mean, I, I mean the, you know, the exact ship you're going on and enter the name of the ship and the name of the steakhouse or some of the specialty restaurants. You may find videos of people who've done reviews online, like on YouTube. They might tell you how, what their experience was like. Otherwise, you might have to look up, say, uh, just a Google search and see if you can find any chat groups out there. There may be some Facebook pages that cover this kind of stuff. Um, and then you'll find out if it's worth it. But uh, obviously, if you want a filet mignon or you want a, uh, you know, a, a ribeye, they're not offering it for you in the dining room anymore uh, because they don't have to. They've now changed the dining room to be more of a middle rung food eatery. Uh, not, not, you know, not Denny's, but you know, not the high, high end it used to be that now you have to go into the specialty area and the steakhouse, I'm sure will be fine, but you're going to pay, you're just going to pay more. Um, <clears throat> uh, Mark was saying, I was thinking about something else when the ship was rocking back and forth, not thinking about it's time to abandon ship. Uh, yeah, 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 I think you said, you mentioned something about you had a neighbor once uh, on one of these cruises and you thought the guy's name was, oh God, 
uh, that story. It's coming back to me. Uh, <laughs> some of you folks were here for that. Uh, those of you who weren't here, uh, I think you can put it together. You know what we're talking about. <laughs> it was right. The ship is rocking. Don't bother knocking. Ah, yeah. yeah Pamela, Pamela Jordan, so cool, Dylan. Uh, cruise is the best vacation. Have a great time. Cruiser 4348, sorry, but Italian officers are not educated very well. <laughs> Plus, they do not take their jobs seriously, especially in the ocean cruise ships. Look at the MSC ships and carnival ships. Isn't, isn't that interesting? That's uh, interesting comments. Uh, Mark the Lost Traveler, I heard a lady one time ask, uh, when does the midnight buffet start? I think her, <laughs> I think her husband abandoned ship. <laughs> We're having Martin here with Mark. This is great. Teresa McFarland is laughing out loud. Doreen Chapman. Yes, Nova Scotia. I got it, Doreen. I remember. Thank you. Teresa McFarland. Yeah, I get I used to get lobster in the main dining room on formal night. Now they have stopped that. I, I, you're right. And you also remember, Teresa, and others of you remember, uh, those of you who are new crew, new cruisers, I'll tell you this. This is I'm telling you this is true. It used to be like this. You'd go to the main dining room, and it would be dinner time. Okay, and they would have uh, they'd have a lobster tail as a as a as, you know as an entree, and uh, you feel like a little more than that. So you'd say to the waiter, "Well, could I have a uh, ribeye steak and a lobster tail on the side, please, at, at double order?" No problem, Mister Mister Bruce. That would be my pleasure. And you know, my wife could order what she wanted. The next the cup. Some folks would say, "Well, I want three lobster tails." instead of the one lobster tail. Or I want another order. I want a second order. Or uh, my wife is having uh, lobster tails. I'm having the, the steak. And we'd like a third order between us of the fettuccine Alfredo, whatever whatever it is. Uh, no problem. As much as you want, all you want every night included in the cruise, enjoy. That was the standard. That was normal. Not abnormal. Normal. Today, unheard of uh even in specialty restaurants uh good luck trying to get a double order of uh you know filet mignon with some lobster tails i i don't know if they'll do it i i i suspect some crews might some cruises might some some won't uh even if you're tipping the waiter in cash they may or may not be able to help you because they may be restricted as to what they can do nowadays it's gone corporate it, it's all gone corporate i equate this now uh, I, I i equate what's happening on cruise ships kind of to what happened in las vegas from about the 70s to the 90s. From 1975, 70, 75, all the way to the 90s, Las Vegas went corporate. All the old casinos that were run by the mob way back when, and then by uh, you know entrepreneurs competing for your business and offering you, you know, steak dinners in the in in their uh, in their restaurants for you know $5.99. Uh, that all gave way to corporate America because these corporations went public. Valleys went public. Steve Wynn's company went public. Caesars went public. They all became uh, victims or, or, or hostages of Wall Street. I'll, I'll use that term. Uh, it's, there's good and bad about going public. But one of the bad things about going public is every 13 weeks, you have to report to Wall Street how you're doing. And then you have to tell them how you think you're going to do. And if you don't tell them you think you're going to do as well as they think you should be doing, your stock gets slammed because they're going to put a sell rating on your stock. And now good luck trying to raise money in the bond market to build the next hotel or modernize the other one. So Wall Street completely took over uh, Las Vegas, and the deals are gone. <laughs> Vegas used to be a cheap town. It used to be a great town to go for a weekend getaway, a one-week getaway. Cheap rooms, cheap food, great food, cheap prices, free drinks. It's all gone. It's all gone. Unless you're dropping, you know, a hundred bucks a hand at the blackjack table, they're not going to take you seriously anymore. You can go to some of the outlying casinos and try to get some of the old days back, but for the most part, Vegas is over. I heard last week they're now charging you to park your car at the hotels on the Strip. Can you believe it? Do you have to pay to park your car in Las Vegas? They're in the middle of the desert. There's land all over the place. But the strip is now so developed out that uh, they're they're putting premium prices on all this stuff. It's all over. On the cruise ship side, it's changing dramatically, as we know, as we're talking about here. It used to be all inclusive, all across the board. But I w I will say one thing about all inclusive. Uh, there are a few lines that do offer all inclusive pricing, and it will run you five grand. Um, you know, if you want to be on like a Viking uh, a Viking ocean liner, nine hundred thirty passengers instead of five thousand. All rooms are balcony rooms instead of the three classes of room inside Ocean View balcony. Butler service on some of the rooms, uh, you know, concierge service. 
no specialty restaurants. All restaurants are included in your fare. Drinks included with your dinner. Um, no tipping required. Um, top notch entertainment, quiet, uh, first class all the way. Uh, first first class furnishings, bedding, towels, the spa uh, treatments are great. There's still stuff you can pay extra for. Uh, but generally speaking, a lot of that ship, a lot of that cruise is all inclusive. The problem is, you look for a seven day cruise in the Caribbean with a with a Viking uh, cruise, you're looking at twenty two, twenty four hundred dollars a person, and then taxes and fees extra. And any other specialty charges above that, multiply by two. There's the five thousand bucks, and uh, I will admit that five thousand dollars today in 2018 is not five thousand dollars back in 1994 or 1984. Inflation, right? So okay, maybe it's half the price. Maybe it's still twenty five hundred dollars, 1984 dollars, but it's more than other cruises. So. You know, you, you drop $6,000 for two people for a one-week Caribbean cruise, you're going to be treated right, and you're going to be treated like your mom and dad used to be treated or your grandma and grandpa used to be treated on cruise ships when they went on that one cruise every 10 years, one cruise maybe every five years. Today, the new normal, we're going on a cruise once a year. Some of us are going normally twice a year. We're going on a spring cruise. We're going in a fall cruise. Or we're doing a reposition cruise. Some of us want to do four cruises in a year. We can. We can afford it. The dollars are are the dollars per person are dropping. It's getting cheaper to take a cruise on a base level. But from there, you've got the extras. And that's what's happened in the airfare business. And it's what's happened in Las Vegas. There used to be the base fare, but in Vegas now, it's getting tough. You try to find a $4.99 midnight buffet in Vegas. There aren't any. <laughs> they don't exist. So it's it's changed. It's just a new world, new normal. We're just going to have to get used to it. Uh, Richard is saying here about the captains and the staff. Yes, I like the British or American captains. They're more approachable. The Italian captains seem to be full of themselves. Quite, yeah, quite hoity-toity. Uh, a cruiser 4348. I don't ever go on a cruise with half the ship filled up uh, with honeymooners. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, there's, yeah, there's a lot of rocking going on. <laughs> it's hard, though. Uh, it's hard. How do you know what ship's full of honeymooners? How, how do you know? Uh, <laughs> Doreen is saying, uh, we got lobster on the cruise last March on the Equinox. Uh, Pamela Jordan, and the Equinox celebrity, five star, not surprised to hear that. Pamela is saying, you still get lobster in the main dining room on formal night on the Oasis of the Seas. And and I'm, I'm glad to hear that, uh, Pamela. But I'm worried uh, going forward, it might be um, an extra add-on. It might cost you like five extra bucks or 10 extra bucks to get that now. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it's shifting. We'll have to see. Mark the Lost Traveler saying, uh, like on the airlines, services used to be great. Now you're lucky to get a drink. Uh, even in first class, they would serve you from the time you left till you landed. That's gone on, on some of the flights. Yeah, I agree, uh, uh, Mark. You're absolutely right. Pamela is saying, <clears throat> and you can order extras, no problem. Uh, that's good. Uh, Pamela, that's great to hear, by the way. It's still good. Teresa McFarland uh, used to be able to uh, get free cappuccino in the main dining room. Not anymore. Yeah, that's right. Used to, you know, order a latte, they bring you a real latte. Nope, nope. It's uh, becoming harder to get. Elizabeth Bream, I love the um, 5 p.m. live chat because I can listen while cooking supper. Sorry, no lobster. Meat loaf. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, Elizabeth. I, I know that's what's happening with a lot of you folks. You're 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 tuning in and you're you're doing other things where you're listening to me. I'm kind of like a radio show. Uh, doesn't matter to me. It counts as a view, as far as I'm concerned. On YouTube, they love it. <laughs> Mark, the last traveler. I remember that uh, all you can eat prime buffet, prime rib, five ninety nine. I went back to New York, New York. Now it's twenty five dollars. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah, five ninety nine prime rib. Uh, you know, then then it was like a nine ninety nine uh, prime rib buffet deal. That was still okay. Twenty five bucks. Yep, it's uh, it's just uh, Bellagio. You want to go to the buffet of the Bellagio? Forty two fifty. Last time I heard, forty two fifty for the buffet at the Bellagio. I mean, you got to be kidding me. That's just ridiculous. But it is and it isn't. I mean, it's it's fine food. I don't, I don't mind the buffet at the Bellagio. I love it, but I used to really like it at, uh, you know, nineteen ninety nine or with my player's card. I had enough points. I get it for free. I really used to love that deal. Uh, Charles Jordan saying uh, we had no problem getting a side order if we wanted steak to go with our lobster 
or for that matter, anything else we wanted on the Oasis. Excellent. Uh, good to hear Holland America still uh, doing it the old way. Uh, Mark uh, Mark Luffy is here. I can relate to the uh, stopping of serving unlimited tops lobster tails. Uh, certain sell I say, certain sell I say, pigs order several dinners just to stockpile them. Ticks me off. Well, uh, Mark, I, I hear you there. Um, I do know uh, people that uh, you would order extra orders, but they eat it all. They would eat it all because they were looking forward to it. But I, you know, uh, they they stopped the uh, the unlimited dining. Uh, and like I said, there used to be a lot more of this. Uh, customization of your meal i mean now it, it's it's getting cookie cutter and uh i have a feeling that uh, that as we go forward uh with a number of these cruise lines some of these cruise lines they're going to become far more um what, what's we're going to look for structured and regimented might be the two words I'll, I'll quote uh where waiters will have to key in on a on a on a handheld like you know it's like our cell phone they're going to have a handheld unit when you order at your table they're going to push the buttons and downstairs in the galley, they're going to make that order. You know, it's number one, number two, number four, number fifteen. I mean, there's, it's going to get more and more difficult to have. What's the word I'm looking for? Flexibility, flexibility for the passenger. Yes, there'll be passengers who will still be able to. You know, can I have instead of a baked potato? Can I have this instead? Or can I? Yes, but um, I see more and more of this regimental thing coming, and it's all about cost control. It's not, it's not personal. It's absolutely not personal. It's money. The auditors and the accountants are taking over, and they're going to they're gonna keep infiltrating this game because these ships are going to be run on a, um, on a margin that is going to become razor thin between success and not successful crews. Uh, these public companies, they have to report to these analysts, and these analysts are insisting that these public companies run their businesses as sharply as the casinos in Las Vegas, or as the uh, hotel chains through the Marriott Corporation or the Holiday Inn chain, these entities are being monitored down to, you know, one tenth of a percentage point profit margin, and they better deliver on the bottom line, or they will get slammed. They'll get a credit rating downgrade on their bonds, and if they're carrying five billion dollars of debt on their bonds, and they lose one notch on that credit rating, that could be a half a percentage point more expensive to borrow money. And they 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 aren't going to do it. They're gonna they're gonna chintz the customer to get the bottom line. It, it's happening that way, and I'm sorry it is. Uh, MSC, uh, I'll, you know, as much as I've been slamming those poor guys on this one ship, I will say I will admit MSC is a privately run corporation. They're not under that kind of pressure with respect to 13 week reports required for the shareholders. They're a private concern. They can shift around all they want. They don't have to answer to anyone except for their board of directors and their owners, privately held. <clears throat> so there's still some lines that you know can work that way, but most of the lines that we know of, the ones that we know in North America, they're all part of a public corporation. All the Norwegian line, uh, lines and, and ships, all of the, Car the Royal Caribbean entities and all the carnivals. Every ship line, Princess, Holland America, sea, you know, uh, Seaborn, uh, Celebrity, they're all part of a public company one way or another. So I mentioned that to you uh, just to kind of, you know, bring it up. I think we're going to see this trend continue. And uh, I'm sorry to see it. I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of too bad. Uh, Teresa McFarland is saying, my mom paid $15,000 per person for her river cruise on Viking last year. I almost can't speak. $15,000 a person for a river cruise last year on Viking. Yeah. Yeah. There. Look, um, there are cruise lines and there are cruise scenarios where you can pay that kind of money to go on a cruise. And if you have it, you have it. And if you can afford it, you can afford it. And I say, God bless you for it because money makes the world go around and you get more for a $15,000 cruise than you'll get for a $3,000 cruise. Of course you will. And um, there are numbers out there that will just blow our minds. Uh, I'm just waiting for my lottery numbers to come in. And then I will be happy to freely spend some money on some nice cruises. And I'd be happy to tell you about it if I have the time. <laughs> but I don't know if I'll have the time. But, uh, yeah, uh, what, what's being done out there? Some of the dollars being spent on there will blow your mind. Mark saying, just found on Viking Cruise on Barcelona, Spain, seven days, $2,999 airline discount. That's interesting. Uh, Mark uh, Luffy is saying, I hope that cruise ships somehow address people, or shall I say inconsiderate, you know what? 
who put a towel on a deck chair right next to the pool so they have the closest seats. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mark, you're, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, that is a, a point of contention. I have noticed uh, some of the cruise lines are sort of saying, uh, uh, Mark goes on to say that these towels are on the deck chairs at 7 a.m., by the way. Um, some of the cruise lines are, are sort of stepping up patrols for this kind of thing. And they've got cruise, uh, you know, sort of cruise people, you know, staff on the pool decks, and they're watching chairs, and they're keep making note of times and usage or not. And if a towel is there for 40 minutes, an hour, no one is using it, towel is gone, chairs available to anybody. Uh, I agree with that policy a lot. I really do. Uh, I find that uh, I find that frustrating. I hear you there. Uh, he's saying that, you know, before anyone's there at 7 a.m., they're already out there. Uh, Michael's saying, this is sounding sucky. Uh, I mean, uh, now you have to pay for the better stuff. Yeah, 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 you do. <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? I mean, it's just, it's just not right. Uh, gosh, and, you know, when I used to talk to my mom and dad about <clears throat> when they would go on cruises, I think they went on two or three holiday cruises after they did the ocean uh, crossings. Um, when I used to talk to them about those cruises, which the last of which would have been maybe in, you know, 1998, they would tell me, oh, it's wonderful. It's just absolutely wonderful. But uh, but then they would they would mention on the last cruise, not as good as the ocean crossing. Uh, they treated us better on the ocean crossing. So even in 98, they tended to note certain differences, little things. Uh, but then again, you know, sweet memories uh, when you go back to 1962 and uh, you got the kids to bed and, you know, we're all dressed up and we're 30 something years old and we're living this dream of being on, on this ocean liner, being in the army, <laughs> living this dream. My father was a musician, by the way. Uh, so he really appreciated the band in the uh, ballroom every night. Uh, wow. That would have been just absolutely heavenly. Um <laughs> a cruiser 4348 is saying if we speak up as cruisers they may have to listen to us uh they do perhaps uh, but i'll tell you uh my friend uh you know if you can sell out a cruise ship with 5200 uh spaces uh that whole, you know has what almost 2000 crew members and they'll tolerate lineups they'll tolerate noise they'll tolerate uh inconveniences um and there are you know uh you could have sold 7,000 berths on a 5,000 berth ship. You don't listen very much, uh, unfortunately. They, they, there's a bit of deafness that starts to build in because they think they've got it too good. On the other hand, you have a couple of stock market days like we had a few days ago. You put a market like that together for a little while and scare the bejesus out of investors, people don't feel so rich anymore all of a sudden. And uh, reservations hold, slow up dramatically on cruise ships. Because the luxuries, excuse me, the luxuries go first, and the core, the core things you hang on to last. Back in the uh, in two thousand and nine, when we had that economic nonsense going on just before Obama came in, the last year of the Bush presidency, you know, we had that economic collapse. Uh, cruise ships took a hit. Uh, Disneyland and Disney World took a hit. Um, hotels, all in resorts, took a hit. Uh, people did not, uh, you know, when they were seeing foreclosures or they thought they might be next. Cruises were not a priority at that point in time. If you had the money, you got deals. If you didn't have the money, you, you, you pushed back. And some people had the money but wouldn't spend it. They were afraid to expose themselves too much, and so they kept cash back, which is part of the problem in the first place. So economics will play a role in this too. So we'll have to see how it all goes. Right now, you know, the economy is growing. Things look good. Cruises are good, but more ships are coming because cruise ships don't stop expanding. That's the one good thing for us as passengers and as cruisers. More ships are coming all the time, and they're adding on the ones that they've got. They don't want to retire the old ones because they can keep selling them out. Prices will be good for us for a while, so we'll we'll enjoy it. Charles Jordan saying, Michael, if it gets too bad, people will stop cruising with those cruise lines. I know I would. Mark Lost Traveler saying it's all about money. The more money we can get from you, which means the next bigger ship comes out for that cruise company. Absolutely. Uh, Michael, uh, uh, Charles Jordan, I agree. Uh, Julie, is, uh, Julie is here. Jude, Judy and and Anstes. Hi, Judy. Hi, Bruce. It's Judy from Sacramento. Welcome from Sacramento. It's uh, I've been on six uh, cruises. Uh, uh, Norwegian is the best. I love that you can eat when and where you want. Chinese food, service and quality sucked. Solo cruise is not cheap, though. Uh, good points, uh, Judy. You're making good points there. Uh, a lot of people have really bought into the Norwegian freestyle cruising motto and style. Uh, it's um, 
it, it was it was revolutionary when it came out. It was brand new, hadn't been done before in any let's say large scale kind of way. Uh, Norwegian Cruise Line was close to bankruptcy uh, back in the '90s. They were on the absolute edge of going under for sure. They were getting kicked around by everybody else. Their ships were in dire need of refurbishment, and their fleet was aging. And they got bailed out by a, a group called, I believe, Apollo Management, private management group out of New York, a, a hedge fund. Uh, people invest a lot of money. They pumped in hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to save the cruise line. And money saved them. They refurbished ships. They ordered new ships. They changed their ways. And then they came up with freestyle cruising. And they, uh, they shook up the cruise business big time by doing that. And they won over a whole legion of fans because they read it correctly. They looked at the demographics going forward the next 15, 20 years from where they were in the 90s. They looked ahead to 2000, 2010. And they realized, hey, Second World War veterans, not going to be cruising anymore. We're losing a 1,000 of them a day to old age. It's just life. The war's over. It's way over. We're now losing the Korean veterans. And now we're starting to lose the uh, Vietnam veterans because age, time. Who is going to be cruising in the next 15, 20 years? And this is think the thinking was from 2000 to 2020. Who's going to be the dominant group of people cruising on cruise ships? Baby boomers and their kids, the millennials. That's where they're going next. And they were thinking eight second attention span, eight seconds. Take a look at your television show, watch a commercial on television. I dare you to watch a 60 minute commercial on TV and you count the number of seconds that the image you're watching on that television doesn't change to something else. Even a car commercial, they'll have the car and within eight seconds, there'll be an angle of the car changed, there'll be a person in front of the car, there'll be another view of the area every eight seconds or less because we have the attention span of gnats. We need action all the time. And on freestyle cruising, action. Eat when you want, eat what you want, all the variety you want, all over the ship, and you never see the same thing twice. So you might do the dining room once, you'll do the sushi once, you'll go to the pizza one once, you'll go to the steakhouse once. That's the way of the world. And uh, those of us who were born in the 50s and, and before, we're fading out. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I'm 62, and uh, 20 years from now, will I even know my name? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see how it goes. That's Norwegian, and they saw it first, and everyone is following behind them. For better or for worse, the eight-second attention span has taken over. Uh, Mark the Lost Traveler, they have, um, they have chair watchers now. There are even signs posted about that. Good point, Mark. That's great. Michael, can anyone remember when things were normal? <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that, Michael. You betcha. Uh, Paula K. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Paula. How you doing? Welcome. Michael, to the person who says about the pigs, they are the ones who ruined it for the rest of us, I guess. Okay. Uh, but, you know, for 25 years, you could order all the, the lobster tails you wanted. You could order a second meal. You could order uh, an additional side dish. No questions asked. It's changing. It's just changing. I'm just saying. Mike Hamilton, watching YouTube, uh, Carrie Nate, they are on MSC out of Dubai. They got upgraded to a balcony for filming on the ship. Hey. Eh? Well, there you go. You know, I, I've been sitting here talking to MSC. I've been saying, guys, if you want to dispel the rumors about the seaside, and I don't, I don't think there are rumors about the seaside. I think it's fact. But if you want to tell the world that all is well on the seaside, you can contact me at a moment's notice, and I will find a way to inconvenience myself to take a one-week Caribbean cruise on the MSC seaside. And you know, if I have to, I'll wear nose plugs. But hopefully, I won't have to. And if I can't find the poop smell, I'll be happy to tell my viewers all about it. I, it could be good for my ratings. I'd love to do it. Just let me know. Uh, you know, anybody know anybody? Uh, put in a good word for me. I'd love it. Uh, <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Mark saying right on. Paula K, so true. Not fair to all of us. Uh, Crash Three X is here. Hi, Crash X from Ottawa. You're my number one. Welcome back, Teresa McFarland. Hi, Crash Three X. Uh, Crash Three X is saying, been watching on tablet. No way to comment, so I have to use phone at the same time. Weird. <laughs> Mark the Lost Traveler, good thing about North, uh, Norwegian freestyling um, is you bring less clothing. <laughs> Love that. Debbie Emanuel, hi, Bruce, back again. Hi, Debbie, how you doing? Love freestyle cruising. No forced dining times and leave formulas 
for, leave formals, high heels at home. I'm really sorry to hear that. I don't think that's a good idea. I think high heels should be worn at all times, 24 seven. That's just me. I'm just a guy, just my opinion, but my wife won't wear them. <laughs> Uh, welcome, Debbie. Uh, Sonny Wallace, uh, there are not rumors about Seaside. Cruised it. All rumors are true. Very sad. Food is mediocre. I wanted great food. And there you go, Sonny Wallace. She, right there. She, there you go. Uh, you know, we're hearing it again and again and again about the MSC Seaside. Not good stuff. Uh, what are you going to do? It's, uh, it's just... When is it going to stop? Is it going to stop? Um, and what are they going to do to stop it? Uh, I don't know. I, I've heard I've heard all kinds of other stories about like people will go to the front desk to complain about the problem. You know, they they uh, I, I was watching. Uh, I read something this morning from someone saying uh, we were in a room uh, on the ship, and then the room next to us was it smelled just awful there, and it was really bad in our room. But it came, was coming from next door, and the folks next door complained about it. They got them out of there, and they moved them to another room. This family, they went to complain to MSC about it, and the MSC people said to them, oh, well, we'll move you to the room next door then, if it's so bad in your room. They said, no, no, you're not getting it. The room next door is where the problem is. We don't want to move into that room. It's also in our room. And they said, well, you'll have to write us an email and complain. You just have to write a complaint. Didn't move. Didn't move. Unbelievable. I mean, it's just terrible. I would love to grab one of these customer service people if I, if you know, can't can't touch them but wouldn't you like to grab these people and bring them with you to your room and have them sit in your room for half an hour with you just kind of why don't you sit here and watch, watch tv with me for 30 minutes let's chat and see how you like it because this is what i'm sleeping in not good oh it's terrible just terrible anyway what are you going to do uh, <laughs> uh mark lost traveler nothing like high heels going down the water slide exactly mark you've got it you know what i'm talking about we're we're guys we know we we know what's best <laughs> Uh, you know, we're, we, you know, we're, I'm, I'm a dinosaur. What can I say? Love high heels. Anyway, it's been fun, hasn't it? Um, I was going to talk about solo cruising today. I wanted to bring this up about uh, solo cruising and deals. We did touch upon it, upon it a bit today, how, you know, you, you're paying more than for a double. I was wondering, you know, if, if solo cruisers out there, uh, if there's a way to get a, the, the best deal for a solo cruiser is, is look for last minute deals where, you know, they've got a, or oh, I don't know, an inside room for say a week, it's like $3.99 or, a, or an ocean view for $4.44. And can you not just grab that room? Even if you have to pay double the fare, you're paying $8.88 for a week, but only one uh, taxes and fee and only one tip package. Is that the way to go? Or because it's the last minute, can you get a deal where it's maybe 150% uh, instead of 200% of the fare? I mean, I'm hearing horror stories and I really feel for solo cruisers. I think this is an area that cruise lines are... are um, not paying enough attention to. I know that uh, some of the cruise lines are adding solo cruise cabins as a as a specific thing, um, but I'm I'm uh, I'm wondering if it's if it's just not being taken seriously enough. But I I I have to admit. I mean, again, I'm going back to this business model that we're talking about. We're talking about cruise ships that are public corporations and they're in a business model. And if they can sell the darn thing out with two people per room. Rather than one, they're gonna they're gonna look the other way with regard to solo travelers for a while. They're just gonna look the other way, or they're gonna make you pay double the fare, and they're gonna say, "Sorry, it's the best we can do." Um, if a cruise line came out and said, "No, no, 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 uh, we our policy is going to be uh, the the you know the 120 rule, 120 percent. You pay you pay the rate, you pay the fare plus 20 percent premium, whatever the fare price is. If it's on sale, we honor that deal. We welcome solo travelers." Um, I think you get a lot of brownie points, but I don't think any of them are going to go first because as long as you can sell out a ship at, at the fares you're getting or close to it, you're not going to offer the deals. And so you may, as a solo traveler, I'm kind of guessing what you need to have is, is a travel agent in your corner, the kind of travel agent that actually cares and will work with you as a solo traveler to get you a, a decent deal. And it might well be that you're going to have a relationship with a travel agent that is one of these last minute arrangements where <clears throat> your travel agent is going to say, okay, look, if you're willing to drop everything with, with 30 days notice or so, uh, you know, in that range or three weeks notice or so, I might be able to get you deals. Um, you don't have to take the first one I throw you, but 
you know, after a while, you better start taking some of these deals because I'm not going to do all this work for you. But if you've got a, you know, if you've got an agent out there that you can say to them, look, twice a year, I want to go on a cruise or three times a year, I want to go on a cruise. And I'm willing to drop everything at the drop of a hat to get the deal of deals. You call me on a solo deal. Then, you know, maybe you've got something. But yeah, I, I get it. If you're working, you know, you have a full time job and you want to go on a cruise once or twice a year and your holiday time is February for winter and in, in the fall or, or in the summer, you want to go to the Mediterranean. You don't want to do another a Caribbean cruise. You've already done four of them. You want to do a cruise in the Mediterranean as a single. Can you help me out? I get it. I, I totally sympathize and, uh, and empathize that it's tough to find this kind of arrangement. It's not easy. Um, just double checking here. Uh, Crash 3X is saying, wait a year till a ship stretches its sea legs and fixes the issues. That's about the MSC seaside. We're hoping, I'm hoping the same thing. Richard is saying, uh, Bruce, you need to start a matching service for singles to share a cabin. What do you think? Uh, yes, um, uh, uh, but one of them has to wear high heels. <laughs> I preferably it's a female. <laughs> I could get myself in a lot of trouble. My wife's at work right now, so I'm I'm okay. But she's gonna she might watch this later. I better be careful. Uh, <laughs> Mark Glass Traveler, NCL gate uh, getaway on the uh, uh, on the 25 inside 1025 solo double uh, 549. Yeah, on the yeah that's. That's uh, crazy. Uh, Mark, uh, with that uh, and that with two weeks left, still no, no, no deals, deals. Yeah. Uh, Mark Lost Traveler, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on the singles match. Uh, Mark's in. Great. Uh, Elizabeth, we have, uh, we have, uh, we've chose to do inside cabins because we have two children and are, and are never in the room. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Elizabeth, this is a good move. You take the inside cabin. It's cheap, cheaper, the cheapest. Uh, you consider it just a bedroom and a bathroom. That's all it is. The ship is your living room, your rec room, your dining room, your uh, foyer, your balcony, everything. The ship is everything to you. And your room, that is just a place to sleep and, and brush your teeth and uh, go to the bathroom. That's all it is. I totally get it. It's a place to put your clothes, change, and then out you go. You bet. Uh, Richard, uh, like that, uh, Mark Lost Traveler, I'm not wearing high heels. Uh, I, I was thinking that, Mark. I was kind of praying you weren't going to be the one. <laughs> Uh, really, I, you know, but, uh, yeah, you know, um, it's tough, you know, if you're, if you're a single traveler, uh, and the cruise line is offering to pair you up with a traveler, you know, two guys, two girls, uh, you just, you know, sometimes you just want to be, you just don't want to do that. You want to be on your own. You like your privacy. You like your own space. You want to be on a cruise ship though, but you want to have your own, you know, your own experience, your own cruise. I totally get it. I, I, um, I arranged for my my mother's uh, final cruise uh, was about um, I'm gonna say it's about 10 12 years ago or the final time she went on a cruise my father had passed and uh, my mother wanted to go to uh, Germany to to visit some of her relatives and she asked me could you set me up my dear son with a flight uh, to Europe and a cruise and uh, I can visit the uh, my brothers and sisters in Germany because that's where she's originally from and I was able to get her a cruise on the uh, Royal Caribbean, on Royal Caribbean. And I'm trying to remember if it was Mariner of the Seas. I'm not exactly sure anymore. And um, uh, luckily, uh, I, I played the, uh, the you know, shop around game. And I found, a, I found a balcony. I found her a balcony. And she got the balcony at the single, you know, as a single traveler. She got the whole balcony. But I booked it with less than 30 days left. And they had room. And I will admit it was later in the season. It was more like September, not in July. It was in September, Mediterranean cruise, starting in Barcelona, ending in Barcelona. And uh, she enjoyed it, although there's, there's a couple of days it was rough seas. Uh, again, early early storms, fall you know, fall, fall weather coming in. But uh, she enjoyed it, and the price was okay. And that's when I went ahead and I booked it for her, and I arranged her flights uh, from Frankfurt to Canada and then a quick flight to Barcelona back to Frankfurt, and it worked out. But that was the last time she went on a cruise, and uh, but that was back in what oh, two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, something like that. Yeah, eight nine years ago. Anyway, it's a side story. But uh, you know, got lucky and found a deal. But it happened to be a balcony, and she did enjoy it. But she would like to have been with someone else at dinner time. She would sometimes sit on her own in the dining room, but uh, other times the the maitre d would say to her. Um, um, dinner for one, no problem. Would you mind if I uh, uh, have you with, uh, you know, pair you up with another solo traveler? 
didn't mind a bit. And and normally he would he would find her a, a, another female traveler solo, and the two would get together and have a lovely chat at dinner time. And mom liked that. She would tell me later, I really enjoyed that. That was much much more enjoyable. So there's always you know ways to to connect with people on board the ship, but you got to get on the ship first, right? That's one of the one of the tricks. Uh, Mark is saying, "Ooh, I'm six six in heels." <laughs> <laughs> Mark Lost Traveler, 6 1 for me. <laughs> Cruiser 4348, it was nice to watch you, Bruce. Sorry, I have to go. Thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks, Cruiser 4348. Uh, I'm going to wrap up here anyway. Thanks for coming today. It was great to see you. I love to have you. Uh, I think we're going to stop it here. Uh, <laughs> we're going too far on one direction now. Uh, I want to thank all you guys for watching today. I think we set a record today for how many people participated all on my, uh, on my daily chat in one day. Uh, the minutes are climbing, and I'm really appreciative. All of you folks who are subscribing to my channel, oh, and I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, the March to 1000 is well underway, and I, 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 I think we're going to make it. I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of really eager to get past 900 <laughs> and have several days to go. Uh, still in the 600s, and, uh, you know, you just kind of go, oh, I'm just making sure you just keep going, just keep going. So I want to thank all you folks for watching and commenting today and, and uh, participating. It's been a lot of fun. People are saying goodbye now. Uh, Mark Lost Traveler, good night to you all. This was a fast one hour, 30 minutes. It, it's the fastest hour, hour 30 of my day. It just goes like this. Teresa's saying good night, everybody. Uh, tomorrow I'm on again, 5 o'clock Eastern. Every day, Monday to Friday, 5 o'clock Eastern. Saturdays at 2 o'clock Eastern. Right now I'm doing six shows a week. And uh, for the foreseeable future, I'll be doing six shows or as long as the voice holds out. And uh, I'm having a blast. And I uh, hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're finding it informative. If there's anything we haven't uh, talked about, just send me a comment in one of my videos. I'll try to get back to you on it uh, or save your question until tomorrow. And uh, you can throw me another one. Betsy saying goodbye out of Hamilton. Richard saying take care. Pamela Jordan saying good evening, Bruce, and everyone else. Uh, I'm saying goodbye to you all. Uh, this is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. Scott, take care. Saying see you next time on uh, Traveling with Bruce. Have a good night, everybody. And you guys take care, okay? Bye-bye now.